Hello, my name is Atif Darush, professor of OBGYN in Asset University, Egypt. I'd like to discuss with you a very controversial topic, which is ovarian rejuvenation, as it is practiced in many centers all over the world, but this agreed uh, in, in many other parts of the world, and would like to be scientific when we are dealing with this uh, very controversial uh, topic. Ovarian rejuvenation is the most important challenge of this century. It is a newly pioneered procedure intended to reawake egg maturation and development within the ovary. So the definition from the start is not to create, is not to form eggs or oocytes. It is just to reawake these uh, eggs and to enhance the development into the mature oocytes suitable for fertilization. So it is a procedure that helps females to use their own eggs, which are dormant, which are uh, uh, in a state which me means that the ovulation is not occurring whether with spontaneously or on induction of ovulation. And this awakening of the ovary can be done by ovarian injection. You can inject nothing. You can just penetrate the ovary with needles, multiple punctures, multiple uh, needle punctures. And this procedure also was used uh, previously or was described in the treatment of polycystic uh, ovarian uh, disease. You can inject uh, the patient's own platelet-rich plasma, which is autologous injection of platelet-rich plasma, or we can inject the fat-derived stem cells, or we can inject ozone. Whatever you inject inside the ovary, the objective is one, which is reawakening the egg maturation and development from the own uh, female oocytes inside the ovary. And this procedure is seems to be helpful to women who are uh, having premature ovarian insufficiency, which was previously called premature ovarian failure, typically before 40 years, women with early perimenopause or women with uh, low ovarian reserve and those with low anti hormone. The modified ovarian rejuvenation means puncture of the ovary itself to relieve pressure placed on the follicle from the ovarian wall, which becomes rigid and uh, thick with aging. So it is obje its objective is to relieve pressure placed on the patient's own follicles. The procedure is not creating, is not forming follicles. It uses the same follicles inside the ovary of this female. Or to inject platelet-rich plasma to activate dormant follicles as well. To inject uh, fat cell derived stem cells which are uh, removed from the ovary like liposuction and then stem cells are isolated and injected inside the ovary. Or to use ozone rejuvenation therapy. But against this procedure, that the procedure is working on the remaining uh, oocyte or remaining uh, follicle pool inside the ovary. So it is not targeted to uh, create or to form new oocytes. So it is just activation of the follicles inside the and with age, with time, the, the pool of the follicles inside the ovary declines and until reaches uh, as low as 400 to 1,000 oocytes in the menopause, according to the American College uh, uh, definition of decline of uh, full number of germ cell versus aging. And it is well known that the follicles uh, 
undergo initial recruitment uh, and cyclic recruitment after puberty and with each stage of recruitment there is a great number of atritic oocytes that means the follicular pool of this male is declining the second object against the procedures of rejuvenation is the very controversial topic of rejuvenation in human being and some scientists described um, some animal studies which uh, defined what's called epigenetic age or clock and this epigenetic clock is subjected to uh, change whether to increase or to decrease according to some factors that affect the genes and it is proved that smoking pollution other environmental factors will make this gene activities decline and these change accumulates so the muscles weakened minds become slowed down and the individual uh, will become uh, a vulnerable to uh, some diseases and this uh, genetic clock is uh, a focus of some research nowadays and of course these studies are primitive and need more and more time to prove the effect on the epigenetic clock and the person's biologic age versus chronologic age it has been succeeded in animals and in some worms to increase uh, longevity uh, of uh, animals. Against the procedures of rejuvenation, the procedures uh, themselves, which mean that they are invasive and costly, of course, may reach up to 1,000 euro or dollar in some settings, and increased risk of infection, bleeding, stress, sometimes. Uh, uh, these are uh, some side effects or drawbacks of these invasive procedures. But the team with the ovarian rejuvenation mentioned that any individual has a biologic age and chronologic age. The same applies to the ovary. The biologic ovarian age, which means the, ac the activity age of the ovary, the which is manifested by biochemical and biophysical evaluation in the form of antrophollicle count, antimolarian hormone, FSH, and so on. And sometimes we have a patient who is young, but biologically her age is uh, old, and sometimes we find the reverse. So the work of ovarian rejuvenation relies on improving the biologic age not working on the chronologic age of the ovary. The second argument of this team is that uh, ovarian rejuvenation is not a new technique. Rejuvenation using uh, platelet-rich plasma has been used in different parts of subspecialties of medicine, particularly orthopedics and uh, other uh, uh, cosmetic surgeries and other surgeries, skin diseases, urogynecology, reproductive medicine, which is our topic today, uh, and some breast reconstruction and other techniques. So it is uh, uh, not a new technique for the medicine, but it may be new in the era of ovarian. And it has been reported that ovarian rejuvenation is an innovative solution for some women with infertility. If you inject plasma-rich platelets inside the ovary, which is autologous, natural product, this will lead to high level of platelets inside the ovary. And this injection of platelets is associated with increased concentration of gross factors from three to five times greater than the plasma. The high 
concentration of growth factors inside of an ovary will lead to cellular proliferation, chemotaxis, differentiation of mesenchymal and other cells and will promote angiogenesis. All these processes are needed for enhancement of the process of folliculogenesis. And these factors are actually growth signals. Like platelet drive growth factors, transforming growth factors, vessel endothelial growth factor, epidermal growth factor, fibroblast uh, growth factor, and insulin growth factor. All these and others are growth signals which enhance the process of folliculogenesis. And these growth factors have been recently studied in, studied in different studies uh, on, uh, after injection of ovarian stem cells and the uh, cascade of folliculogenesis starts and controlled by different growth factors. So the ovarian rejuvenation actually is ovarian regeneration and reactivation of folliculogenesis. In one study, which, uh, you, which is of a good sample size, uh, they classified our patients into two group, groups in an unrandomized interventional way. The, First group, which is, which was patients with premature ovarian, uh, poor ovarian reserve, and included four, 46 cases, and the other group included women with poor ovarian reserve, as a control, which included 37 cases, and the, in the first group they subjected patients to monthly intracortical ovarian. PRP injection for three cycles and in the other group no intervention and they achieved a significant improvement in FSH, antimolar hormone and antrophilic account in the uh, study patients and as a conclusion of this study which is a recent study they found that the autologous platelet rich plasma injection is uh, advantageous in patients with low ovarian reserve so, autologous PRP, as I told you, includes taking blood sample from the whole blood from this individual and centrifuge, and the remaining plasma has five, three to five, and some studies mentioned five to ten fold higher concentration of growth factors than the whole blood. And these growth factors and cytokines will lead to supraphysiologic. Uh, stimulation and promotion of natural healing process and natural regeneration inside the ovary. So it can be used in patients with ovarian failure or premature ovarian insufficiency, poor ovarian reserve, and sometimes some studies used it in uh, cases with thin uh, endometrium without uh, sufficient uh, clinical evidence. Ovarian rejuvenation is followed by uh, uh, improvement of the biophysical and biochemical criteria of ovarian functions. The results appeared independent on the patient's age, infertility duration, baseline platelet concentration, or pretreatment antral follicle count. Another case report on a patient with a very low antimolarial hormone, as low as 0.02 nanogram per milli, and they injected uh, about 4 milliliter per ovary inside this uh, ovaries of this patient, and uh, the patient got pregnant and she had early abortion. A case series of women with Amenorrhea for more than one year included three cases. Two cases with premature ovarian insufficiency, aged 40 and 27 years old, and another group which included one patient who, were, who was menopausal, aged 46 years. And all these three cases achieved pregnancy 
through natural conception within two to six months following PRP treatment, and they uh, had complication-free clinical pregnancies. Some studies injected not only PRP inside the ovaries, but make, made a combination with gonadotropins, and this was a case report recently published, and aiming at uh, provocation of folliculogenesis by injection of this very high concentration of growth factors and cytokines, as well as gonadotropins, which are essential for the uh, uh, process of folliculogenesis, uh, and actually these factors will stimulate theca and granulosa cells inside the ovary. So adding gonadotropins is a new uh, advance in this era of ovarian rejuvenation. Other studies injected autologous stem cells derived from the uh, fatty tissue and it is called autologous stem cell ovarian transport, which is ASCOT. And this uh, recent, relatively recent study included 17 women defined as uh, ovarian failure or poor ovarian reserve using ISHRI criteria. And they derived stem cells from the bone marrow and injected directly into the ovarian artery by intra-arterial catheter and the, uh, they subjected the women to the granulos granulocyte colony stimulation factor treatment to be mobilized to the peripheral blood and then collected and subjected to controlled ovarian stimulation for IVF and pre-implantation genetic screening and they achieved ovarian function improvement in 81% uh, of cases and the ovarian function improvement was defined as increased antifollicle count by more than three follicles and or two subconsecutive increase in antimalarial hormone. Moreover, 33.3% of cases got pregnant after this procedure of injection of stem cells. In all cases, the contralateral ovary was served as a control. And if you see this pregnancy rate, it's very good pregnancy rate if compared to the natural cycles or even some assisted reproductive cycles. And they concluded that autologous stem cell ovarian transport ASCOT could represent, represent a paradig paradigm shift from fertility treatment for poor ovarian reserve and women with severe uh, deficiency of ovarian functions. But current evidence remains limited. So these procedures of ovarian rejuvenation are affordable, simple, easily performed, minimally invasive and effective in some cases, giving the patients hope why not to practice these procedures in those cases who were told by many doctors that they have no hope for fertility? You offer them hope based on some scientific background. So why not to encourage more studies, more randomized studies, and to uh, enhance societies, to uh, encourage societies to uh, make big sized uh, sample sizes studies and more randomized controlled trials and so on to uh, settle the exact role of these procedures in modern but again the large uh, the evidence is deficient for these studies most of them are case reports or case series and the debate is far from settled so large sample sized randomized controlled studies are required to confirm the efficacy and safety in various uh, gynecologic disorders. If you like this video, please press on the like icon. If you need more lectures, please press on the subscribe and notification icons. And thank you very much. Bye bye.